Hi, in this tutorial, we will show you how to start your Nearpod account and how to use Nearpod in a Google Slide lesson. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you uh, have activated your personal or your work account. So go to nearpod.com. This is what the screen will look like. On the top right corner, you will see the login button. So go ahead and click on login and always use your um, omsd.net. So if you see um, the Google option and click on it, it's going to ask you um, which account you want to open your Nearpod account with. And always, always use your at omsd.net um, account. This is the home page for Nearpod. Um, right here on the left side, you always want to be at this home page where it says My Lessons. Anytime you create a lesson or link it with a Google Slide lesson that you already have, it will save it here on this initial page. And from here, you can launch it to um, your classroom. So I want, oh, and one more thing. Up here on the right hand side, you will see this uh, user icon. You always want to make sure that you have the Premium Plus license. And once again, that at omsd.net account is linked to your Nearpod account. So if you go, for example, um, to your Google Slides, let's say you've prepared a lesson with your, for your students and you want to launch it as a Nearpod lesson, the first thing you want to make sure is that it is in your add-ons menu. So here on your menu up on top, you want to click on add-ons and then you want to look for Nearpod. I have this already installed, so that's why it's showing up. But if yours is blank, all you need to do is go to get add-ons, click on it, and then you should see it up here or you can search for it up here on the search menu. When you find Nearpod for Google Slides, you want to go ahead and install it. Mine is already installed, therefore I'm going to click out of it. And you do need it added on to your Google Slide menu in order for it to be, um, to make your slide interactive. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Nearpod here inside my Google slide. On the right side, you will see the Nearpod menu of activities that you can go ahead and select. So you'll see here all these different activities that you can insert in your uh, Google slide presentation. So let's say, for example, you have this uh, Google slide here and you either have text on it um, where you've had students read it to themselves or you read it to them um, and you want them to maybe summarize uh, the reading that you just uh, presented. Um, I would use a collaborate board if you want them to see each other's response. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. Um, what it's going to ask you to do is to enter a topic. So let's just say this is reading and uh, you give uh, a description of the task you want them to do. So pretend that you want them to summarize uh, chapter two, let's say. Once I save it, you're going to see what it does to your Google slide. So Nearpod is going to insert a slide after your initial slide. So the interactive activity will come after you move your presentation forward. Um, at this point, it's going to ask the students to actually type uh, their responses and submit it, and then you'll approve them, and the students will be able to see each other's responsive. That is how a Collaborate board functions. There are other um, different types of activities that you may want to explore, like, for example, an open-ended question. You can um, insert uh, also a drag and drop, which is kind of fun, or you can insert maybe a quiz um, right here. You want to see how your students are understanding your content. Um, the main difference between Nearpod and Pear Deck is that Nearpod inserts the activities um, after a slide. It does not embed it on top of the slide. Um, the only type of activity that you would be able for students to actually write on top of your slide would be if you converted this slide into a draw it 
um, and that will allow the students to actually draw on top of your slide. Um, once you are done and satisfied with the activity, activities that you have prepared for your students using this Nearpod feature on the right side, you want to save and then go to Nearpod to see how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It will automatically send you to your My Lessons homepage. And do you see here that it's saving it? And in a minute, it will allow you to actually launch it. So here you have either live participation, which means that you control the slides and the progress that the students do through each slide, or if you want them to control it without your interfering, then you want to submit it as a student paste or launch it as student paste. This would be more for like asynchronous work or maybe as homework. So if you're in the classroom and you want students to participate using your Nearpod um, lesson, then you want to click Live Participation. I will do that now. And it's going to give you some options for students to actually connect to this lesson. So they're going to obviously have their own Chromebooks. Um, they can either go to join.nearpod.com and then they would have to insert this code in order for them to interact with you through this lesson. Um, if you're in Zoom, you can um, copy this link um, by selecting this icon here, and you can paste it in the chat in order for students to quickly access the lesson. They will not be prompted to enter a code, so um, it will be straight into the lesson. They will be connected directly into the lesson. You can also push this out as an assignment in Google Classroom. So if you do that, you can click on Google Classroom. It will ask you which class you want um, this assignment to be connected to, and then it will push it out um, through that way. So there's three ways you can have students connect to this actual lesson live. Um, and then um, once you're presenting, um, the slide presentation works by using this uh, forward button here on the right side or the back button here on the left side. So as you go through the slides, you will see um, that Collaborate Board activity appear, and it's going to ask you, do you want to approve the student comments before they're posted? I would click yes. And then once you do that, it will allow students to actually um, type in a response here and then post it as you can see on the right side you will see their responses pop up it works again like a jamboard but differently and then once you move forward it will lock them out of that interactivity and it will direct them towards your more recent um, slide here so it's very easy to use nearpod in your instructional day um, if you have any questions on how to use it or you want more resources, please um, go to um, the Symbaloo page, click on Curriculum and Instruction, click on Educational Technology, and you can request assistance by filling out an EdTech assistance form right here on the right side, and we will be more than happy to reach out to you um, to offer more assistance. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.